Aloha and welcome to At the Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King, and I am truly so excited to have you here today with me as we get ready to talk about Census 2020. You may have heard that as we conclude this year, we're not just ending any old year. We are at the end of a decade and the beginning of a new decade. Within each decade, we make it a point to count every person living in the United States. And that's why we're talking about Census 2020. This year, Census 2020 is April 1st, 2020. And we want you to be counted, not fooled. Today we have with us a partner or a partnership specialist, Sharon Truex Nakashima, who's joining us today to talk about Census 2020. Hi, Sharon. Hello, Akisha. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm so delighted and honored to be here. And it's just, as you said, you know, we're gearing up, we're getting ready. Our mission is to count everyone once, only once in the right place on April 1st, 2020. And as you know, time's mm -hmm. going to go fast. Yes. I can't believe we're already towards the end of the year. Yes. So 2020 is right around the corner. It, it truly is. It truly is. And um, if I may take just a quick moment just to thank you. I know besides doing all of the wonderful hosting that you do here <laughs> on this program, you also are a very active and dedicated member of the NAACP. And the NAACP has a complete count committee, which we'll talk about a little bit later on, that uh, ensures that every African American on Oahu, and not only on Oahu, but on all the islands throughout the state of Hawaii are counted in this decennial census. So thank you for volunteering and taking your time and your passion for that as well. well thank you so much. It's truly a pleasure to serve with the NAACP. Um, I am there education committee chairperson and then for the complete count committee i'm the education chairperson for the census so i'm really excited about it it gives us all an opportunity to ensure that every member of our community here in this beautiful state is counted and represented yes. so and we get there on saturdays and oh my goodness we could spend three or four hours there coming up with ideas NAACP Complete Count Committee is honestly one of my favorite groups, you know, oh. I, I hate to say it because some of the other groups might say what, you know, <laughs> but it's so true because um, you were the first grassroots organization on Oahu to form a Complete Count Committee. You are passionate about it and I can just, you know, see the leadership you know, coming, you know, through, and I use the NAACP CCC Complete Count Committee as an example to other groups when we're speaking across the islands. So uh, congratulations <laughs> on that. And we are going to be counting on you and everyone uh, to really kick it up, you know, for 2020. Well, we have some great things planned through the NAACP for the Complete Count Committee for March. And we're going to talk about that Maybe in another show, okay. because it is something that we are <laughs> leading into so that we can count every person. And I should mention that we want to count every person on island, but and we're putting an emphasis on African-Americans, but we're looking at every group because, yes. as you know, there are some groups in the last census who weren't represented well because in that area, maybe they didn't have enough representation or they couldn't get out. So we're going to get into that during our second half. Okay. All right. But Sounds first, good. I want to ask, why do we do a census in the first place? Okay. Well, since 1790, it's mandated by the Constitution. And the census serves several purposes. You know, several purposes. Uh, one is, you know, um, for um, the House of Representatives, you know, mm -hmm. it, it is so that we can have representation. We also, um, you know, it is for, um, well, it's, it's for, I'm sorry, excuse me, it's for our congressional districting, you know, where the district lines are going to be drawn, you know. Mm -hmm. And then most importantly, it, it, it takes care of, um, and it's connected to 600, over $675 billion across the United States states and federal funding. So it goes to serve our community. And when we break it down, we're looking at approximately $2 billion, probably a little bit more nowadays, you know, because mm -hmm. this is based on estimates from the previous census. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about, you know, the impact on programs. I always like to say to everybody when I'm on speaking engagements, 
Heiki to Kapuna, you know, mm. from the, the children all the way to the seniors. So we're talking about everything from school lunches all the way to Medicaid, you know. Mm. And what we're talking about is how, you know, um, based on the population count, you know, we need to know where people live and where they are and who they are. And mm -hmm. once we can determine that every 10 years, uh, it's very important for us to be able to have those very special safety nets whether there be like a Pell Grant for mm. college students, you know, uh -huh. where are we going to create the roads? Where are roads needed? Where are the hospitals going to be? You know, mm -hmm. so my big um, message to everybody is when we look at the cause and effect of census, then we understand that it is so much more than quote, just a survey, you exactly. know, this, this is a representation. This is your voice in the community and you're helping not only your ethnic group, for example, or, you know, we have a, like, for example, we have the LGBTQ plus group who has a CCC mm -hmm. and we have advocates for children and seniors, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but not only for your own group, but when we're talking about strengthening and building a community, we're talking about taking only 10 minutes of your time to fill out a census. That's exactly right. It doesn't take long to complete. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the fact that this year will be the first time ever we've been able to use technology in the ways that we will. For example, we can use our smartphones. Yes. We can use a laptop or computer to complete our census survey. So we can show that first uh, slide now to say why we ask. Okay, that okay. sounds fantastic. Because yes, because this internet, um, self, we call it internet self-response. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll still have the ability, there's some seniors and people that have asked me questions and mm -hmm. said, I still like to do it, quote, the old-fashioned way, mm -hmm. you know, which is the traditional mm -hmm. way they've been doing it all these years. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll still receive it in the mail as mm -hmm. such, but you have this ability to answer these questions that are popping up on the screen right now. Mm -hmm. And um, these are the actual uh, questions that will be on, on the, the census. census and they don't look hard you know they, they want to know not. the number of people living or staying in the home exactly it's not hard they want to know about additional people there if you're an owner or a renter the telephone number dates of birth one question okay that is not on the survey and you can bring it back to us now one question that's not on the survey that i want us to be clear of and i want you out there to hear <laughs> this one question about citizenship most people think it's still on or that they're trying to get it on. It's not. Sharon, talk to us about the citizenship question. Yes, so there was a decision. The citizenship question actually originally was on the census up until 1950 as part of the Voting Rights Act. Mm -hmm. And then it was taken off, okay, several decades passed by. And then, as you know, about approximately less than about two years ago, um, there was a motion to put it back on the census. But these questions are vetted and they go through a very time consuming process. They're not just set, uh, questions that are popped onto the census. Right. They have to go through a process of why these questions are asked. And when it was brought up, you know, in the current climate with so little time, uh, there were people that said, wait a minute, you know, there's, there's not enough time for us to vet that question, even though it mm -hmm. used to be on there. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's find out what's happening here. And it did go to the Supreme Court. There was a ruling uh, that was earlier this summer. And so that question, uh, you know, we, we, you know, even though we still get asked if that question is going to be on there, we do want to reassure all of your viewers that no, that question is not on there. Um, so these are the actual questions. You can see them on our census.gov website, the actual mm -hmm. survey. So you can mm -hmm. see what it looks like. So mm -hmm. actually, we've already gone to print so there will be no additional questions on there and <laughs> okay. as i shared it only takes 10 minutes of your time that's that's if you're going slow right. that's probably if you're having a snack while you're writing <laughs> your census you know <laughs> but but really it should be like this and you know for for some of us on our smartphones you mm -hmm. know it's going to be very quick uh those who are going to do internet self-response have the ability actually to go a few weeks early march mm -hmm. 12th mm -hmm. is our kickoff mm -hmm. for the first time in the history of the the census to do internet self-response. Right. And so. that's what I mentioned earlier is that this is the first time in the history of the census that we can go online and we don't all have to be counted on that one day. Exactly. People can get a jump start. 
Yes, and we want, like for example, yourself and myself, we hope that like people like us, that we are on there on mm -hmm. that first day, and mm -hmm. we really should be, you know, because yes. we are committed and, and um, you know, to ensuring that the complete count happens in Hawaii. And the good news is this, Keisha, I don't know if you, you know about this part, we're gonna be able to see uploaded onto the census, onto the website, the response rates as yes. they come in. So, you know, we don't have to wait around till April 1st. We mm -hmm. can start seeing things happening on March 12th. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, wow, Hawaii, we're already on board. Look at that, mm -hmm. Honolulu's going, or mm -hmm. this group's going, mm -hmm. you know? And, and we can know that, uh, we can feel good knowing mm -hmm. that we took a part in that and exactly. made it happen. Yes, and I like that because it's kind of like uh, voting or other, when they say this pre precinct has been counted and this exactly. area has been counted. And so if it hasn't been starting with March 12th on to April 1st, yep. then we know as a complete count committee that we can go out there and knock on those doors with you guys or right. get our groups together and say, hey, let's get you counted. Let's fill this survey out. Yeah, let's make yes. sure it happens. And again, sure. you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. You know, I, I like you and, <laughs> and I like you we, we, like, we like to keep it real. So yes. I, I will say this, many of the, the facts and things that we're talking about right now, you know, I've always filled out the census. I, I knew that, you know, just like I, I always do voting, you know, mm -hmm. this is very, very important, you know, mm -hmm. as, as an American, we do these things. Mm -hmm. And I will be the first to tell you, I had no clue how important that, you know, if I don't fill out the census, there may be a possibility of a child not receiving a school lunch. You know, mm -hmm. we're taking money out of the, the kettle, so to speak, and not a good, not a, in a good kind of way, you know, mm -hmm. and, and how we can contribute when we, when we want to do something that's very easy for us to do that makes a big impact in the community. This is it. So. This is it. I love it. If you want to have an impact on the community, any individual can yes. do this. This yes. is not very hard to do. And there are lots of groups who are out there who are willing to help. So we will keep that in mind. We're going to go to break right now. But okay. when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about how others can help themselves and the census by getting a job with the federal government. Yes. That's a really, That's my really favorite important. topic. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot of favorite topics, just like me. You're watching At the Crossroads. We're going to take a quick break and come right back after this. Hey, aloha, everyone, and welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studio. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii. We air here every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii time, trying to bring you issues about security that you may not know, issues that can protect your family, protect yourself, protect our community, protect our, our companies, the folks we work with. Uh, please join us and I uh, hope you can um, maybe get a little different perspective on how to live a little safer. Aloha. Aloha, my name is Duray Shin. You are watching Think Tech Hawaii. I will be hosting a show here every other Wednesday at 1 p.m. and we will be talking to a lot of experts and guests around sustainability, social justice, the future here in Hawaii, progressive politics, and a whole lot more. So please tune in and thank you for watching Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha and welcome back to At the Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King, having a great conversation with my friend Sharon from the Census Bureau. She is the partnership um, let's see, chairperson? I'm the specialist, and actually I'm currently the Hawaii team lead for, um, we actually have seven other partnership specialists in different languages. So I speak fluent Japanese, Perfect. but we have, you know, Annie, whom you met, you yes. know, for the representing for the Filipino community. Mm -hmm. We also have a Spanish language specialist. We have two native Hawaiian uh, partnership specialists, native Hawaiian Pacific Islander. Mm -hmm. And we also have a Chinese language specialist that we just hired. So oh, we're cool. going to have to get him on board here. Mm -hmm. And then we have one in Maui and one residing in Hilo. And then, of course, we reach out, you know, so nobody's on Kauai right now. So we go out to Kauai and to all the different places as well. You guys are putting forth a great effort to make sure everyone is counted. What I think that is unique about Hawaii is that we're so transient. We have people here from all over the world. Yes. We have military personnel who may be stationed here, but this isn't their permanent home. What happens with them? How are we counting 
every resident. Okay, that's a great, excellent question. And we do have information that is on our website that you know we would love to have people check out. Okay. Uh, we call it group quarters and um, mm. and you know it's a special residency criteria so we have a special way of you know doing what we call the enumeration or counting of military personnel who mm. are stationed like for example here you know we have so many bases right yes. they're stationed on Hickam Pearl Harbor I can't or, even keep up with how many bases exactly we have. <laughs> you know so yeah I've kind of lost count you know <laughs> but we have every branch of the military service which we you know really we respect them. and we we love them you know yes. so um, we want to make sure that that they're counted, you know. So what happens is they're counted on the base where they're stationed at. So mm -hmm. their military commander and their military leadership will be counting. And also, we've also already connected with the military housing folks mm -hmm. because we've got, you know, people that need to be, you know, counted that way. Mm -hmm. um, some of the other examples of what we call the group quarters or group facilities, we mm -hmm. have everything from, you know, college students, April 1st. Okay, they're at UH Manoa. They're mm -hmm. on the campus in the dorm. They're not graduated yet, or you know, mm -hmm. they're they haven't left the campus yet. Mm -hmm. So they will be counted there. Even okay. though, for example, mom and dad might be back in Dayton, Ohio, but right. you know, we're going to say mom and dad don't count your daughter because mm -hmm. she's actually going to be part of the UH Manoa count. So you know, we have to have the, those kind of conversations. Mm -hmm. Also, um, you know, those who are incarcerated, mm -hmm. you know, um, we have to take in them into consideration also shelters you know mm -hmm. um, also uh, assisted living care homes um, mm -hmm. I've personally gone around I've been in Manoa you know, um, you know all of these different uh, residential places mm -hmm. and we've been talking to the managers of mm -hmm. each of those um, places so that we can say like the plaza for example and mm -hmm. we can talk to them and we just say please make sure we want to make sure that every person that is in this facility is counted on April first so there there will be an enumeration happening there too now you know Sharon we have a huge population of homelessness or houselessness yes so I know that you have a plan in place for the for anyone who is houseless Absolutely. Why don't you tell us a little okay. bit about that? Absolutely. It's going to be a little bit in stages. Uh, the first part of that stage um, is going to be we are working right now um, with groups, uh, for example, partners in care. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these are people that are passionate, you know, as, as professionals, they, they take care of the homeless. You know, mm -hmm. the Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction right. Center, mm -hmm. you, know, um, you know, the Gregory House, you know, a lot of different uh, segments of the community. Mm -hmm. And they're working you know they're, they're kind of uh, making like a coalition and you know working together to you know tackle this this crisis that we didn't have you know, I mean, we had it in, in a different shape and form 10 years mm -hmm. ago, but now, you know, this is going to be really top of mind, you know, for us. And one of the things is we are working, um, you know, of course, with the city and county of Honolulu, for example, and um, Mark Alexander is the director of their uh, Department of Housing. And, you know, he's already big, joined, a, you know, with the CCC mm -hmm. and Complete Count Committee, and he's mm -hmm. helping us out. But here's what's going to happen, Keisha. So right now we're just doing preliminary work with these partners and saying, okay, we want to make sure we have a complete count. We're going to need the help of professionals who know where these people need to be counted. So mm -hmm. we're gathering up the, that kind of information. January, um, I believe the date is, I, I believe it's the 23rd. It's, it's that third week in January. There is going to be the point in time count. And mm -hmm. that's the one day where everybody that is homeless will be counted where they are, you know, mm -hmm. shelter or no shelter mm -hmm. on the beach, you mm -hmm. know, wherever they happen to be in parks, mm -hmm. you know, and we're going to reach out and there's going to be a complete count of that. That data, that information will be shared with us, you mm -hmm. know, as part for the as, as a like a prelude to the census. And then uh, we are going to be doing our count with our field workers and um, specially trained staff, of course, you know, mm -hmm. because the circumstances are a little bit different. It's a lot harder to count the homeless, as you can imagine, than yes. it is to walk into an assisted living facility and ask the administrator, OK, there's have. 25 right. people here, exactly. you know, we're done. Mm -hmm. But but we want to make sure. And um, just to let you know, even if somebody's not able to fully respond, we are going to make a note and make that count that there was, you know, for example, three individuals right here at this park. 
-hmm. at this particular juncture, you know. Got and it. so because, as you know, they need the funding the most. Exactly. So it's a catch-22. Exactly. If we can't count them, you know, they the cause and effect of the funding, and, mm -hmm. and, we've, and we've all got to work together, put mm -hmm. our heads together to make solutions happen. And this is part of the solution. And I love it. And you answer that so thoroughly. It's important that we know here in Hawaii, of all places, yes. that every person is counted and especially our houseless um, community members because they need the funding the most. When we talk about the numbers, we're talking about six, over six hundred billion dollars. Yes, across the United across States. The United and States. then for us, it's at over $2 billion. So, so when you it break matters. it down on the low end of it, it actually, okay, when we look at ourselves as individuals, you are controlling and taking care of about $1,533. And mm -hmm. I am doing the same, you know. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. for example, if we if we walk away and we don't fill out that census, that's money that, you know, is not, again, you know, our fair share of the the pie, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, you just said sayonara just, to the money exactly. and the money just flew off and went to another state. And we you know? never, we never say sayonara to no, the money. No, we don't. We <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing that we're going to agree we on. Are, right? oh, yeah. All of us, all yes. of us. What about uh, American citizens who are not living in the U.S.? at the time of the census. Okay, um, they are also, you know, they're, they're living in an overseas kind mm -hmm. of situation. Mm -hmm. uh, they will also be uh, counted okay. and acknowledged for. So that's uh, one of the things that we, um, you know, we want to make sure, because they, they could be stationed outside. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, like for example, even with military and, you know, other mm -hmm. circumstances. So mm -hmm. uh, we will make sure that they are counted. You know, so the different embassies um, mm -hmm. across, you know, and the, the consulate, they mm -hmm. get all the information, of course, um, overseas. But you know what? We're we're connecting. Um, we just became best buddies and friends with the Marshallese Council General oh, and good. the Vice Council General, and we were just doing outreach uh, this past Saturday at their town hall meeting. And boy, yes. they had a lot of questions, you mm -hmm. know. And I'm they sure want to make did. sure that they're <laughs> counted. Yeah. And they were asking, you know, can we get jobs? You know, what? Mm -hmm. You know, how can we uh, participate in this? You know, so they were very inquisitive and that was like our first major outreach so good. We're, we're making friends with everybody on the island good 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 you've been so busy I want to get into <laughs> as we promised I want to talk about these jobs because yes. there is a huge push for census jobs right now absolutely yes we just had a wonderful national recruiting week um, mm -hmm. where we did an extra push you know mm -hmm. that just happened but but you know what every week is recruiting week at the <laughs> census you know and until we get the project done and, mm -hmm. and let me just say a lot of people might be shocked to to learn this we are the largest peacetime recruiting effort, you know, the 2020 census, hiring for the 2020 census, it happens every 10 years. And we mm -hmm. hire more people, you know, mm -hmm. more than, for example, Walmart or mm -hmm. McDonald's. You wow. know? <laughs> yeah. So we are hiring, you know, and, and we want to, you know, really um, what we'd like to see is a lot of representation. You know, we, we need to hire people from the community mm -hmm. because as you know, in some of our rural areas, like on the big Island mm -hmm. and, you know, when you're talking about way out in the country road and Kauai, mm -hmm. um, you know, we want to make sure that they're seeing their neighbors interacting right. and asking, you know, for their right. census and where is your census and did you turn it in? Right. You know, it, it sounds better when it comes from a friendly face and, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and they know their community. They right. can point out where mm -hmm. are people, you know, is somebody still living at this house or exactly. where do these people go? You know, right. so the, the neighbors know the answer, right? Sometimes yes. it might be the nosy neighbor, <laughs> but, you know, that's okay. We want the right. nosy neighbor to mm -hmm. tell us where the people are, you know, because because we want everybody to participate. So, yeah. um, you know, it's 1855JOB2020, uh, and that's our phone number for our hotline. And then, of course, you can just go to 2020census.gov mm -hmm. and jobs, and mm -hmm. it's an easy process. I would like to invite the number right there all, on the screen. There it is. Apply I would online. like to invite all of your viewers. Let's, you know, this, you know, let's get on this right now because mm -hmm. as we know, the holiday season comes, you know, it's mm -hmm. put on the back burner, mm -hmm. and then here comes January, you know. Right. Well, we want to make sure that all of your viewers are mm -hmm. ahead of the 
the line, so to speak, and they've mm -hmm. gotten, you know, gone through the process because it takes a little while. Right. You know, we want to make sure that uh, people have ample time to fill these mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And um, we are doing these also like at job centers. Uh, we're going to the universities. Right. We're going to libraries. Mm -hmm. And the, the library staff has been trained also to know about how to help you. Uh, fill this out. Like good. suddenly, if the computer freezes up, mm -hmm. you know they can help they you can out. They can help in that process. Very good. So for Census 2020 jobs, you can go yes. all things census related. You can go to census. 2020.gov or census.gov? Uh, it's 2020census.gov. So we, okay. we have a, we have a um, you know, we have a census.gov that, that's all the time uh, mm -hmm. for the Census Bureau. But mm -hmm. um, if you want 2020 information, you can go right to it and cut through the chase with mm -hmm. 2020census.gov. Got it. I love this. And you know what's really good about our government is that they're offering great pay, flexible yes. hours, Weekly pay, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. And pay training. Yes. So you're not going to go and just figure it out no, on the job no, training. No, no, no. It's pay training before your first day. Absolutely. And the, the paid training will start in March. Uh, okay. So we're looking at, you know, the, the big time for, for the, the people that are going to be about to be hired, March, April, May, June, you know, mm. all in all in that time period. Okay. And yes, you will be receiving a little, um, you know, you'll, re you'll receive all of the equipment that you need to be able mm -hmm. to do the enumeration. You are paid during training. Mm -hmm. And I, like I always like to say, it's a little bit more than you would make, like at a fast food place. Right. You know, the hourly rate is very good. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, you're doing something great for the community. You're mm -hmm doing work that you can be proud of you can put this on your resume it mm -hmm. could get you in you know it gets you into the federal system so it could lead to something else yes. you know that you can say hey I was already doing I worked for the Census Bureau mm -hmm. now I'd like to do something else right. and it's a great way to, to get going on careers well, as a former director of human resources I've always told people it's easier to get a job when you already have one <laughs> exactly you know once yeah. you're in the system you can then maybe navigate into something else. Absolutely. So it's not a one and done. I've had so much fun talking with you today. Oh my goodness, I have too. And, and again, I'd like to thank you for your dedication and devotion as an NAACP, African American Complete Count Committee, you know, as a leader in that, uh, in that respect, you know, for the Education Committee. Yes. And I'd also like to thank you for, you know, taking the time to ask these very vital questions so that, you know, our big thing is we like to go around throughout the community. So please have us back and I we'll will. have more updates along what we call this road to 2020. I will. I'd be so delighted to have you all back again. We're going to do it. We'll probably invite Annie as well. And then I all hear right. there's an electrifying um, person that you want to oh, tell me about. We have so, we have uh, some <laughs> fiery and passionate uh, people on our team here in Hawaii. So Team Hawaii is is like a volcano. You know, uh, we are we are erupting <laughs> with information and energy, mm -hmm. and yeah, we're mm -hmm. making things mm -hmm. happen. In so. a wonderful, good way. Yes. I thank you so much. You've been watching At the Crossroads, where we've talked about Census 2020. We want you to remember the question you're worried about, it's not even on there. Don't be afraid. Complete your census. It happens April 1st. So don't be fooled. Be counted. Thank you for watching At the Crossroads. Aloha.